Hello and welcome back to the Loop Hero series. On the last episode we had a very successful run as the rogue. We went back to Act 1. We beat the Lich Boss again with this new uh, class. And we continued a few more loops afterwards. I think we ended up doing 9 or 10 loops. Picked up a bunch of resources which lets us build a cemetery. So now we get memory fragments going through uh, a cemetery tile. And we can get a resurrect after an upgrade. Uh, currently, all the upgrades for everything we've built so far are way too expensive, often in like the 20 amounts for resources. So also this needs a resource we don't know yet. Uh, and we can't build anything else quite yet. The supply depot we've seen linked to numerous buildings, uh, for example the smithy. And we had another one. Is it the, not the cemetery? Hmm. I can't remember. We have seen it somewhere else in another card that it links to. Was it the farm? Yeah, it was the farm and the smithy. So I think on this run, we're gonna go back to act one again, because I still feel underpowered for act two. We haven't really gained a significant buff to our character's fighting ability from doing this rogue run or opening the cemetery. So I think we do a warrior run on act one again. We try to loop as often as we can, and either we build the crypt to give us a new class, the necromancer, or if we got enough metal, let's unlock the supply depot, which will give us a uh, additional craft ability, unlocks a ruins card, and from now on you'll be able to find useful artifacts for your people, which I don't know what that means yet. So I think, well, if we get eight metal, we unlock this. If we just gain like 11 stone, we'll do this. Unfortunately, we can't get, I think, 11 stone. I think it caps at 10, so we might want to look for getting an ability that gives us resources and lets us drop the resources off at the camp. We've seen it a few times and never taken it. This might be the run we do it. So let's do our expedition again. We're going to go back onto the warrior. So we're getting a ring slot again, no boot slot, and we have an armor slot. I'm fairly happy with my deck at the moment. I don't think there's anything I really want to change. We don't need the spider cocoons. Uh, the swamps don't benefit us. Uh, healing, taking, uh, dealing damage us would hurt both the rogue and the warrior. And I'm not getting too much effect of Chrono Crystals. The only one I'm really considering is Road Lantern. But I think this formula worked once to defeat the first boss. I think we keep with this. Everything else works quite fine. So let's confirm this. And let's start again. As always, these first loops will be fairly simple. We start off with Warrior's Gear. So let's immediately equip that. So we will definitely be fine. We still have Potions. So nothing should be a problem. We should be able to just fly through this. I'm hoping the warrior gives us more metal than the rogue will because we get loot after every single fight. So I'm hoping we can stack it up in here if we get enough enemies on the tiles that we'll just knock everything off the edge. Get lots of metal. That's, that is the goal of this run. Let's place a cemetery down in front of us. So that's pick up stone. As usual, I'm going to pop this resource bar out because I like to see us picking up the resources. And now we're getting memory fragments, as I said, for going through... Uh, Cemeteries. This was a resource that we got only when we overfilled the hand, so it'd be nice to pick these early on. Hopefully you can get Book of Memories, I think they were called. This meadow I'm just going to place in the top corner for now. Actually, it's a bit of a misplay. Maybe I should have placed it here. But let's just start the mountains on the top this time. Normally we leave a little tile around the edge to put meadows everywhere, so we can get blue meadows on all of these tiles, but the only tile that wouldn't get that is the corner. I think I'm going to put a Vampire Mansion here. As usual, I want to get as difficult as possible early on. We want to really lean into the power that we have a healing potion early on to make difficult fights early, get better loot, and outscale our enemies. That recipe has never changed. Okay, we've got more meadows. I'm just going to keep placing these up here for now. And, as usual, no problem through loop one. We've now filled up to three potions, so we get two potions on each loop completion. And we shouldn't have too many problems here. We're going to pass this graveyard again as the day passes. Maybe we should have moved it around this side of the loop if we were a bit more experienced to get this guaranteed skeleton spawn, but I guess we live and learn. We also picked up a ring which we should just immediately equip because we haven't got one so far. So, yeah, things going okay so far. I think we'll definitely put this pole arm. And as usual, the Vampire, difficult enemy, gives us good loot. So immediately, let's just start upgrading. Early synergies don't seem to matter too much. In fact, we're fairly comfortable getting through these early loops now. 
Act 2, on the other hand, we're not comfortable getting through the early loops. Here's our first mounting tile. We'll start making our 3x3 three three grids, as usual. Uh, with this Vampire Mansion, I think I'm going to place it on the inside of a corner. Again, it's probably beneficial actually to put one round the camp because we want one to block a spawn of a uh, Lich Palace. So let's place this just here, and then we, even though we don't gain the benefit, unless a slime spawns on one of these tiles. We also got an interesting spawn last time of, I think, like a Cosmic Slime or a Black Slime. I'm not sure what caused that. I don't know if it's just a rare uh, drop here. It's something we're just going to have to look into. Again, Cemetery, let's block a tile for a Lich Palace. We do want a Grove here and a Blood Grove, so we can't place anything just before the camp now. We've sort of tied our hands up for that. And here's our Grove. Make another Blooming Grove. And yeah, things are going uh, very well right now. Our Blood Grove. At the base, we've got a Village Plate down. I'll go into planning mode. Damage to wall, yeah, I think that's better. Hmm, now the village. I think we want to place this near the vampires. I think it's early enough to ransack it. Yeah, so let's do this. I think we place it here. Leaves us a tile to place the wheat field. We can't even put the wheat field by a ransacked village. It does say just a village, though. So that makes sense. And now we'll get Scarecrow's Vampires spawning here, and eventually we'll get a large health boost off this. But this corner right now is going to be very difficult for us. So, I'm hoping we've not gambled too much and lent too much into this uh, high damage. We'll find out when we get around there. Again, as usual, mountains up here. Can't place this wheat field, we'll hold it. I mean, so far in this game, one of the things I would say is it's probably not the best banter game for a, a starting a YouTube channel. I was hoping to do just a bit more general chit-chat, but there is a lot of focusing you need to do. A lot of, like, hovering over weapons and repairing stats. Uh, just a lot of decision-making. And, I mean, I don't uh, blame the game for that. I think it's really nice. There's constantly something to be looking at. And I'm still enjoying this, and I'm a few hours into the game now. And I don't feel like I've really progressed too much into the uh, the game. And as I said, we only just unlocked that too. So I'm hoping this can be a fairly long series. Uh, damage to all on our ring is really useful for this fight, tickling everyone down. As I said, this area is going to be a bit more dangerous for us because we can't deal with more points very well. And everything has vampirism. But we're sort of countering a vampirism with damage to all. And indeed, this. Difficult battles given as a better weapon, and I'm just going to immediately equip. We're going to hold Oblivions until we know for certain we don't need it to break up Lich Palaces. Single Slime should be no problem. We didn't even pop a potion coming through there, so this has gone fairly well for us. I think we are going to have Scarecrow soon, but we'll deal with that problem as they come. We're now going to get half his. Which is fine. I, I would like to maybe unlock this next class actually. I have mentioned I do want the Supply Depot. I think it has more effect with other tiles. Hence why I would like to uh, unlock it. But that being said, I'm intrigued if the Necromancer can't heal and if we can use those Swamp cards. Because currently we've unlocked that card and never played it. It looks like it would bastardize both the Rogue and the Warrior's abilities. As to, say, to mention, we should probably say at the start, the warrior will now have no crit effects, so we don't have a crit damage chance or a crit damage amount, as we did on the road. Instead, we're going to have regen per second and vampirism unlocked through abilities. So th this warrior has a lot more sustain than the road, so we're probably going to be more reliable at getting to this late game. Uh, spawning a goblin uh, camp, and I'm quite happy where that spawned right now. It's on a fairly barren part of the loop, so I wouldn't mind fighting too many goblins there. I'm not going to believe you in it. Again, placing mountains, rocks down, and we've already got a preserved rock. We're about to ding as well. As I mentioned, we've got to look for this skill to put our resources into the camp. I'm not sure if we want to take it early, but I think we can risk it this time. So we have just leveled. 
uh, battering ram, we've seen this before. So our first attack has a 75% chance to stun each enemy. I quite like it. After receiving this effect and after every loop, the hero receives a bar of phantom protection that equals 65% of his max HP. All damage to it is dealt ignoring defense. And every counter attack restores HP. We've taken this before when we beat the boss and it propped on the boss. So I think I'm taking this again. This is just the survivability we were asking for. Let's start a treasury. And start upgrading our gear. We have two four rings. I think I will take damage to all actually at the moment. He's a starter kind of undervalue. I think we should always be building towards beating the boss and we want synergies to be able to do that. It's all well and good being able to get around the map defeating our enemies, but if our build is very bad against the boss, who's just a single target, then we're gonna lose. So I don't think I've respected it too much, but especially in these early game where we've got uh, four ghouls and a vampire and a single tile, I think this is useful just to help us kill these early enemies. Uh, I could take regen here, and as soon as I uh, say we've undervalued damage to all, goodbye damage to all. <laughs> and we could take defense and counter, but I prefer to keep the vampirism. Our health has started to go down, we're nearly at 50 at HP. We still have got the bubble shield, but just this regen to tickle our HP up in the background, I think is well worth it. As I said, on a winning run against the Lich, we had quite high regen just going into the final fight. We did have a counter synergy for most of where I think we got to 50% counter. Uh, but just at the end, we got regen, vampirism, healed to full. But then we got our shield again, we had so much HP that we could just survive multiple attacks on the final boss. Our first time, we only had like five or 600 HP, so I think anything that can keep our HP high is a very strong ability to the warrior. Indeed, we're still staying above uh, half HP in this difficult area. I'm going to continue to try and open the treasury. I might hold off on opening the treasury though. Uh, I can trade vampirism here for more damage and damage to all. Or I can have evasion instead and, and one less damage. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to take the evasion. And I think I'm going to swap attack speed out for vampirism. So I've effectively traded vampirism for my weapon onto my armor. I have lost attack speed for doing this, which is a bit painful, but I'm hoping, uh, hoping? <laughs> Language hard apparently. I'm hoping in the evasion that it's going to save us more HP in the long run. But yes, things are going pretty well so far. Would like to see a few more villages early on because the quest gives us a lot of XP. Uh, damage to all encounters and regen. No, I'm thinking to keep the regen and higher defense plus counter. Okay, I think I'll take that. Okay, so this is probably the hardest fight on our loop at the moment. A nice few evades there, I think even a counter. I'm not sure who we have No, we have no damage to all at the moment, so it's single target. We are targeting probably the most difficult enemy right now, which I appreciate. We popped a potion there, which as I said, we. The whole point of getting these potions at the moment was to allow us to survive the early game and be more aggressive. And I think this is well worth it to be more aggressive early on. It really sets the tempo on our runs. So we're definitely going to get through this fight fine. Picked up a level 5 ring. A lot of attack speed removes regen from us though. I think I'm going to take this. Attacking faster, vampirism will prop more, is my reasoning. And things will die faster. I'm also going to pause in this end loop just to make sure that I can place down the rocks and mountains fast enough. So, rock here, mountain up here. We picked up another a spear, which has high amounts of counter on it. A shield with vampirism instead of counter, I think I will trade. And let's have counter again. Counter in theory is double damage as I've mentioned before because we get an attack and enemy will attack and we'll hit back immediately. Let's see if it works like that. We did uh, lean into this as I said, we were trying to focus synergies around the skills. We picked up a lot of skills that give us counter attack synergies and before the boss we switched out. Which I did say I wasn't going to do but I guess I lied. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be the same this time. 
uh, sorry, if I'm gonna do the same thing again, if I'm just gonna stick with a Sinji through the mid game, and then as we fight the boss, switch onto armor um, the main part, synergize with our skills will, will allow us to kill him faster. Uh, so this ring trades 8% attack speed for vampirism and regen. Yep, well, that looks awfully for me. The other nice thing about vampirism, as you can remember, especially for the warrior, is that it's probably worth fighting some easy tiles just so that we can pick up HP. Uh, hmm. Mountain, I'm going to place up here. Again, we could do this trick where we try to get another treasure. We did do it on the last episode to place here, so we can save one tile. I think for now, I'm not going to worry about it. Another day passes. We are a bit low on HP with no potions left. I'm still happy that we're going to finish this loot for now. We are regenerating quite a lot, like 8 to 10 on hits. So we're fairly steady on our HP. We got more wheat fields. We really want some villages right now. Placing meadows up here. I could use it to open the treasury, but I'm, I want to open the treasury as late as I feel like I can do to get better loot through the loot. We've also got a bubble shield down, so we only healed about half our HP. We got two potions back for passing through the camp. And this shield has already been eroded off us pretty quickly on this difficult tile. Two skeletons and a vampire on this loop is pretty bad. Vampire has great sustain, the skeleton is hitting pretty hard. We have picked up a level 5 shield with counter, and I think we do trade now. Of course, we've now picked up a treasury. So, I kind of regret placing that meadow now, but sometimes you just get unlucky. We have also popped a level, so let's see what we can get. So we can get a full hand of Oblivion cards, 10% chance to keep a card after placing it, or three traits. I think I want three new traits. I don't know if I really value card sharp. I guess it could be nice to place like two treasuries down, or if you use Oblivion, you might get it back again. But I think there are better skills out there. So we have Battering Ram again. 1.5 damage for every potion used. I don't know if that's permanent. If it is, that's quite a nice ability because we've used quite a lot of potions already. And defense is increased by one after every loop. Let's try Strong Aftertaste. We've never seen it before. Our damage at the moment is 18 to 26. It still has, says 18 to 26. I don't know if you can track this stat somewhere. But well, we'll see how it works out in battle. This treasury, I guess I'm just going to place above. Rocks on the corner to open it and just keep putting mountains down here. I should probably also look at the armor, uh, the, sorry, the weapon we just picked up. More damage, trade of counter, has magic damage on it. I think I'm just going to swap up. Regen on our armor with more HP. It will trade away most of the last bit of our vampirism. Also we have a ring that I don't think I'm going to swap. I like the attack speed to stay the same. Really this is quite a difficult question. I think I'm not going to trade. I think I'm going to keep what we have. In part because I said we're trying to get meta so we do want things to come off the screen. I don't think it's a significant improvement for us. So, let's stay with how we are. Rock here, mountain up. Again, in our mountain tiles. So I might hold on from finishing off this treasury until I complete the loop. I think we'll be comfortable to complete this loop. This also delays the spawning gargoyles. Which again, I don't think it'd be too difficult an enemy for us. We have another battlefield. Hmm. I don't think we want to play these two battlefields next to each other here. And I don't think we want battlefields next to the goblin camp, so I think we're going to place it here. We'll get free treasure at the start of each loop for now. Oh, I also have this rock which I'll place on the next turn. We have a legendary level 5 shield. Has vampirism, regen, magic defense, uh, sorry, magic damage and defense. Trades off 12% counter. Swap. 
More damage, better. Okay, we've picked up another grove. I think I'm going to place this here with the goblin camp and try and get a blood grove on our goblin camp. As I said, I'm going to place this rock on this corner for now. Spawn another goblin camp, which might be in range of the battlefield if they go off the diagonal. This could be a, a tricky tile. I can't remember if goblins have to go off the tile adjacent to them or if they can make a diagonal. So we have now picked up a pole arm, more damage. I'll take it for now. And a lot of counter, but it trades our vampirism away. And we don't have counter at the moment, so. And no counter synergy, so I'm not going to take it. High evasion, more max HP, less vampirism. Again, as I said, it'd be nice to have a little bit of banter, but at the moment it's just decision after decision, really. So it's about 90 HP, and we'd lose our vampirism. So I'm sort of saying, yeah, I think it's about an equal trade. So our vampirism was probably healing eight to 10, so it would take maybe 10 or 12 hits, and we should not get hit for one of the attacks. I don't know what the average damage of an enemy is, but it's fairly similar, I think, when it all works out. It really depends what attack you evade. If it's a flesh golem, then this is definitely better. We don't have evasion now. As I said, we want metal, so I think I'm just going to let it slide. Another blood grove. Love to see it. Helps us kill enemies. And the... Uh, sorry, what were they called? The flesh golems give great loot. Nice, we're targeting the leader. Unusual for our character. Now we've picked up a level 6 legendary shield, which has vampirism, counter, and damage to all. Yes, please. Blood Grove is now helping us in this battle. Picked up a little meadow. We're opening this treasurer. And I'm quite content with how things are going. Things are definitely going quicker now than they used to be. We're hitting level 5 loop fairly consistently, at least on chapter one. I think on our first run we were like bowing out around now. But just these little tiny things have added up, like the extra HP on healing per loop and the potions and some of these new cards really add up in the end. It's quite brilliantly balanced, at least from what I've seen so far this game. The devs done a really good job on it. Uh, completed the quest, so that should have been a lot of XP. We're still quite far off leveling. Uh, place some rocks in the corners here. I don't think I'm going to quite have time to uh, pop both of these at the same time as a complete loop. We might even want to hold out for one more loop. Yeah, I think we'll be fine to try and do one more loop. We're not in a huge risk. We should be going back up to full potions. Finally, we've got another village. Hmm. I might see what happens if we place a village by... A battlefield? Is there a synergy? No, there is now a bandit camp there though. So maybe that wasn't my best idea. Either way, wheat fields either side of it. And we have another battlefield which I'll place here just in perfect time so we'll get the chests when we complete the loop. And another meadow. Yeah. Single rat wolf shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. We in fact should heal off this and indeed we're healing 11 per hit, and he's only dealing 6 to us. That's a deal I'll take every day. Now, we you ask for one uh, village and multiple come at once? I think I'm going to set this up on hmm, this corner here for now. More wheat fields. Do I vampire mansion this as well? Or, as I said, I can place more around here. I think I might place another one here, start blocking more Lich Palace spawns. I think now it can only spawn here and here. We also picked up a level 5 uh, legendary weapon. Less base damage, but has evasion and vampirism. And damage to all. So, if we hit 4 enemies in a fight with damage to all, it's actually higher damage. I think I will make this trade. It's, again, pretty close. 
So our day is gone, we get more loot chests. We have 65 HP bubble shield, we healed to full, full potions. Everything's going great so far. Just have to watch on our boss meter. As I said, we spawn in quite late on the road, so I don't know if this boss meter changes depending on which character we picked. I don't know if that's how it's balanced out. Uh, yep, yeah, switch that up. But I think last time we popped it around, was it eight loops? Wait, currently it looks like we're going to get this a bit earlier. Level six shield, more defense, loses the vampirism. I want to keep that. And armor, which is better HP, we lose 1% vampirism. This is definitely a switch. As said, metal was the resource we were looking for, so we really don't want to trade if we don't have to. But I think we can't say no to just flat out damage upgrades. Again, I'm going to put another blood grove. Sorry, I'm going to put a grove here and try and get a blood grove on the corner. Maybe on this inside corner if we get one more grove. This is just to block the Lich Palace spawning. Uh, and we have one more cemetery, which I'm just going to place straight in front of me. Remember, we're still getting these memory fragments from walking through. Uh, I said, should we hold these rocks? Yeah, I'm going to hold two rocks when we get them and open the treasury on the next loop. Got a new quest. I've never seen a quest land on a chest. I don't know if it, it can not do that. I think it would be a bit broken if it could because most of the time the chests kind of fight back. Level 6 ring. Evasion. Counter and attack. Attack speed, but a lot lower count, uh, attack speed. We do have a bit of counter at the moment. We have no evasion right now. And 30% vampirism. Again, I think I'm going to hold it. This ring might be better, but I don't think it's a, a huge upgrade for us. Same with this ring. I don't think it's a huge upgrade for us. If we want the metals. That's the main point of this run. Metal and stone. Pause to place a mountain. Not interested in them. Armor with evasion, vampirism, regen. It's a lot lower vampirism and gives us a chunk more HP. Mm, yes, I'll switch. Getting a lot of a good loot off these actually so far. This loses Vampirism but gives us like 80 HP more. Also trades off for Evasion. It's quite high regen. I think we take it. Place the mountain up here. Meadow here. We're saving these two rocks still. This tower could be pretty difficult. We'll have help from the Blood Grove. Really, again, we want to hit the Goblin Leader if we can. He's now getting a buff of Enraged. And we've dealt with this pretty easily. I picked up another treasury. Let's place it again on this line of treasuries up the coast. Uh, we've also picked up a few rings. Uh, no, not interested. A lot of Vampirism attack speed, it does trade it down a bit and we lose some regen. But Vampirism is still fairly high. Let's switch up. We're fairly balanced right now. We have like a finger in every single pad. But we seem fairly comfortable. I'm sort of still waiting for a skill up and we're going to level fairly soon. That really makes a decision for me. Another difficult goblin camp. I could start oblivion in these, but I'm not feeling the pinch yet of this loop being too hard. No. No. Start placing meadows down actually over here for this. And I think at the end of this loop, I will pop the two treasuries I can do and see if I can get uh, another level gain. This is also pretty difficult to have. Flesh Golem's hitting at 81 at the moment. I think we saw him at the, the end of like the 10th loop was hitting for about 150, so it was virtually like the boss. But they always give great loot. I mean, 
still haven't failed me. So let's pause quickly just to look at all uh, the loot we got. So this is a slight damage downgrade, but we get counter. Our counter at the moment is at 8%. I think we will trade up. We have a shield, more defense, more vampirism. Welcome to the team. I should have looked at this shield first. This is way more defense. We don't get vampirism. It does give us attack speed, but I think I'm just going to keep with what I've got. Meadows. Become blooming meadows. Mountains are our strip of mountains. We're fairly close to spawning another goblin camp, I suspect. And we complete the loop. So, as I said, let's pop our treasures. So, a another level 7 shield. A lot of evasion. Takes away from our vampirism. And takes off our regen. It's a lot of damage getting damaged to all. But I don't think so for now. Ring with more evasion. Not interested. Better armor, more evasion. Trades off regen. And trades off our damage to all. Not all of it, just most of it. But it's the plus 64 HP worth it. I'm going to say yes for now. And we do have a ring that is just 4.8 regen per second. There is a part of me that's tempted to take this. So we had very high regen before. This will take it up to... Uh, about six, in fact six exactly. And we have now got a bubble shield that would heal underneath it, but we're at full health, so it doesn't really benefit us. So I'm not gonna do that. Instead, just gonna place these down. And yeah, just carry on. We have got another grove. I'm gonna place it here. We still want a blood grove there. We also saw last time if you destroy this grove, it becomes like a, a hungry grove which does more damage, like it'll kill enemies at 20% instead of 15%, but it will damage us. So we basically should never oblivion a grove next to a blood grove. It is bad for us. I think I'll trade this. The raw damage is probably better than damage to all. We've just leveled again. <laughs> I think we've seen it on every run, the uh, drop 10% of resources in a camp. Still not seeing it on this run, unfortunately. Defense is increased by one after every loop. Every morning the hero's sword is filled with sunlight, which does more damage. So it does two times damage to all, and 10% upon it. Sorry, 10% chance upon hit a stunning target for one second. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the defense here. But again, it's kind of a hard deal. This is, presuming this is retroactive, seven defense, which seems quite a lot actually now that I've played the game more and more. Let's go with it. Let's raise our survivability even higher. I'm just gonna go into planning as well after this battle, just to quickly place the rock down. There's a rock. The mountain shield just with base stats i don't think it's worth it and much higher attack speed damage to all magic done i think i will trade this it costs us hp but we don't really need the hp right now we just took an item that gave us higher defense so let's push into the attack i think this is one of the few times you would see me taking an item that actively takes away sustain off us. As I said, now we are now with this blood growth in this corner, which will help us kill the skeleton. We're about to spawn the boss. I forgot to even look at it. Fortunately, I just remembered. Yeah, I think I'll take this ring. So we might want to hold off now spawning the boss until we complete another loop. Try and get as good loot as possible. But we very much want something that is a noticeable difference. Our vampirism is at 24% now, which is pretty good. Is it worth the plus 20 attack speed and higher defense? Hmm. We lose 11% of vampirism. What's our attack speed? So it goes to 32%. 
I'm gonna say no, but mainly because of the metal. Let's test the mimic again. But that's fine for us. I'm gonna hold on to these rocks for now, if I can. But I would like to open up the uh, treasure with them. But I'm slightly concerned at the moment that I think I would spawn the boss placing both of them. Level 8 armor with much higher attack speed. Welcome to the uh, party. Another meadow. Again, I'm going to have to hold on to this, I think. I also wonder if it's worth ever fighting the boss rather than just keep looping it indefinitely for now. I suspect it is worth it because you do get a boon from fighting him. Which I guess helps us complete future loops. But currently we're very comfortable with where we are. But if we get through this loop fine, I think we spawn the boss there. I'm even going to let these ablutions just go off the screen, I think. This is a difficult tile. A lot of damage here with both a Goblin Leader and a Flesh Golem. He gets in his rage off because... Uh, the mountain, sorry, the flesh bone died. Did drop some pretty good loot by the look of it. Regen, counter, and magic damage. A lot more HP. Or slightly less HP, but has evasion, counter, and magic damage. Hmm. I think I'm gonna trade. It does cost us a lot of our attack speed. But I don't think I will trade that. So we've just lost an Oblivion now. Which, as I said, I'll let happen. We have three potions as well. So, I'm pretty happy. I think that ringing noise, by the way, is these being completed. I'm not 100% certain. I keep meaning to uh, check. Uh, we could lead into Regen even further. But trade off a Van Prison. I think I'm happy with what we have. It's not a big upgrade. Please attack the Goblin Leader, and never mind, kill him last. So we're coming round again to the end of this tile, uh, sorry, this loop. Healing off the villages, which is nice, but we're not really taking too much damage. So, we complete this loop and I think we immediately spawn the boss. Complete one more loop, get better loot hopefully, and then we'll be in a good place to fight him and keep looping onwards. Currently only it looks like the Flesh Golem is giving us better loot than what we have. So I would like to place a Blood Grove if I can. Two more fights. We're not that close to levelling either, we probably won't level before we fight the boss. But I feel pretty strong now. And these villages will really help us for another loop. If we can keep a hold of them. Oh interesting, the boss spawned without me placing anything. I'm not sure what uh, caused that to happen. Hmm. I don't know what caused that to happen then, that's quite interesting. Maybe it just slowly ticks as well when we complete a loop. I thought it was only when you place tiles, but maybe it's not. Either way, I think I'm content with this. We've learned as well to make these blood paths, so let's see how they work out. And then I'm gonna put a grove, a grove, and wait for a blood grove. Villages, I'm gonna place down here. We have one more village that we can place. I would like an uh, uh, sorry Oblivion. He did spawn one of his palaces. I forgot that there was still a tile there. It's fine. We'll deal with it. Uh, mountains we'll place over here. Rock, and I think I will use this meadow just to open the treasury. I have another level eight mace. 
which is better for fighting multiple enemies. I'm hoping I can upgrade this for the loop. It's probably worse, for, well not probably, it's definitely worse for fighting the boss. But I'm optimistic. Uh, do I want to place another battlefield down? Hmm. I think there's no harm placing one here. Admittedly we have no benefit either of placing one there, but... Right, let's try and complete this loop. But I can't complain too much with how things are going. Uh, this is equal vampirism, four more defense, trades off regen. I think we'll trade this off. I'm quite confident that we'll be the boss. We're also fighting lots of enemies in the set, and I'm hoping we get more loot. We've already picked up six metal. Which is quite a lot. I don't know what he caps on. It says 13 from one metal. I, I presume the cap of the completed resource is 10 for everything. But we don't know that yet. We trade off Vampirism for counter. A lot of regen and attack speed. I think we do trade this now. Our regen is now 4.2. We have another Blood Grows. So I'm just going to quickly... Uh, two, that two Blood Grows. I'm just going to quickly pause this. We want one here. And where do we want our other one? Maybe over here. So let's place a grove and a blood grove. We have one for the boss to help us kill him. Two cemeteries. Hmm. That's in the effect of the blood grove. I'm quite happy with that. And let's just place one individual one here. And I'll hold Vampire Mansion again for now. That shield doesn't interest me. That ring, on the other hand, does interest me. It does trade off a lot of our regen. Damage to all, which doesn't help us fight the boss, but 14% evasion is quite a lot. So let's swap. I will open this treasury as well in this loop if I can do. Just picked up another treasury, in fact. So just to remind you, we can't place this adjacent to something, but we can place it there and save a tile in the middle. Place a rock down. Single skeleton should be fine for us. Still very broad in terms of like our synergies. We haven't gone down one path this time. It's very much in fact throughout the entire run having little bits of everything. But it seems to have suited us uh, pretty well so far. That chest didn't drop great loot for us. Blood Grove again helping us out. A lot. Place meadows around our treasury. We want to open one if we can. We're close to opening the right one. A lot of mobs on the loop as well now. I don't know if you can find out how many mobs are on each loop. It'd be kind of interesting to know, just from a balanced standpoint. This is more more damage but less damage to all. I think we take it because we're coming up to the boss. I say coming up, we're about halfway to the boss. So single target damage is better for us. We could take damage to all, but I'm not going to. I think I would rather use this to try and pop open a treasury now. It's a bit of waste on its synergy bonus, but it's only a little tiny bit of HP. It's worth it if the treasury pays out. Good for us. Uh, these rings, more regen, less HP. I'm not interested. And do the moment, we're picking up a lot of metal. That was one of our goals this one. We're still pretty high on our HP. We are now getting like tickled down a little bit. But this is probably one of the hardest tiles we've come against. Many goblins. He didn't hit the goblin leader either. He was also a quest, making him even more challenging. Nice. But look how many monsters are on the map at the moment. I think we've nearly finished the loop in terms of placing tiles. Can we even place this anywhere? Yes. Let's place it here. Another rock on the corner. We spawned a goblin camp. That's fine. 
this area over here looks very dangerous for us. Well, I believe in old warrior die. You can do it. More groves for the grove god. Right, open this treasury. It's probably not as good. No, damage 12. Again, we're not really interested in that stat. As I mentioned before, I think I will start using bounties to try and open up these treasuries. Like so. One more grove. Let's just place it here. Gives us one more resource when we pass over it. As I said, I would like to loop if I can. But we're already coming to capping on our resources, so we might just leave. Another tile full of goblins. I do love how, like, the little tiny buffs have helped us. Just picking up Cemetery at the base, we've now got three of these Book of Memories. And it was so hard for us to pick these up early on in the game. Uh, we're going to have to place a zombie mansion, sorry, zombie mansion, vampire mansion here to open this treasure. It has given us damage to all attack speed, not interested for the boss, and a worse weapon. This mountain I'm just going to place down here. No more treasuries to open. Let's carry on. So, what I'm looking for now. Leveling would be very nice. Picking up an ability will help us just kill the boss. Other than that, and I think I'm... Oh, do I trade this ring up? So evasion down by 6%. Damage to all is not useful against the boss, really, so we get vampirism. It does look odd for me to trade down a level... a uh, two-level lower ring. But equivalent regen, as I said, it's effectively a trade of damage to all, which won't help the boss. So it's 6% evasion versus 10% vampirism. I think I will trade this. And that was the card I was looking for, Oblivion. So I'll pause this after this battle. Let's remove that one Lich's Palace. We have another Wheat Field. We have one place to place it, so let's place it down. And carry on. Still incredibly high on HP for how difficult this loot looks on paper. We picked up another Oblivion as well, so we could remove a tile if we think it's going to be too tricky, but at the moment I don't think anything is going to be a problem for us. We're attacking the right enemy here. We picked up a level 9 weapon. So lower damage, more... it's a lot lower damage actually. But I'll say it's 7 damage lower for 8% evasion. Our evasion is already 17%, so that'll take it up to 25. I think we'll try this. One every four hits not hitting goes against the boss. He's going to hit us four times, so odds are it's going to save us about 100 damage. As I mentioned before, my mentality has very much changed now. I'm looking at items that will help us beat the boss. We also skilled up. So resource cap in this expedition is increased by 50%. I think we want this. Yeah, let's take it. So now we can start picking up more than 10 metals, for example. Hopefully we might even get enough to open Supply Depot and the... Uh, was it not the Grave of the Crypt, was it, we were looking at opening as well? I think it was the Necromancer. Definitely not going to level before the boss again. But things are looking good, guys. We're getting heals effectively off fighting these single target enemies. Went through the uh, village, another nice little heal for us. This was probably our last kind of difficult tile. But it's still no match for us. I'm just going to quickly pause again. I would like to place this village somewhere if we can. There's only one place we can now place it, which is here. We might as well place the rocks down. We have a cemetery which we can only place here. In fact, I probably should have placed the village here. I guess that was a misplay. Uh, just the flesh golem standing between us and the final boss. Oh, and a vampire. I would like to kill the flesh golem as soon as possible. But attacking the one enemy, I didn't really want to attack first, but it's fine. We are going to get an overshield in this final battle. But he is very chunky. Pausing again just to look quickly at this uh, armor. 
So Vampirism, Evasion and Defense, more damage. Equip, a lot more HP, down and counter, Evasion has some defense, lower is our damage, but if, again I think I like this, and I don't want this sword. It is a lot of regen per second, but we're about to fight the boss. It won't have too much of an effect for us. Ooh, nearly fought the boss then. Quickly placed down two rocks for the tiny bit of HP we get, and a blooming meadow. And let's fight the boss again, I guess. How is it possible? Shut up, we've got a score to settle. <laughs> I was hoping he'd be a lot uh, smaller, so he's hitting for a lot. He just hit 174. We have got this overshield right now, and Vampirism and our regen is kicking up our health in the background. Again, it looks like it's going to be a win for us. He's down a third of his HP. He's not even touched our actual HP bar yet. It'd be very nice if we could actually keep some of this bubble shield if we want to loop again, which at the moment I do want to loop again. Great evades at the moment. 13% evasion has worked out very nicely for us. We just took off our bubble shield, but we're at full HP. Nonsense. This is impossible for so many reasons. I don't understand. Next time I'll try something new on this punching bag. So a new achievement punching bag. I guess that's for beating him multiple times. So you can either have a resurrect charge... 5% chance for a chest to spawn on top of a killed enemy. Okay. Or I can take a resource of one of, like, everything. Not sure what this resource is, in fact. Hmm. It's a difficult one. In theory, like, the chest could give us more metal, and it's one of the resources we were looking at getting. But just free resources... <laughs> I'm going to take this, I, only because I don't know what this one is yet. And I think I'm going to stay on the loop. I think we can beat it again. Hmm, not sure what that other sphere was. It doesn't seem to be in our inventory. We've got another orb of immortality. Let's look at our armor. So this is a downgrade on defense. Upgrade on evasion. Bit more defense and has damage to all. So we could go back into damage to all actually, so I think I will equip this. Damage to all, counter, attack speed, defense, trade off vampirism and the regen. Again, I think I will trade this. And then our weapons. So counter and evasion, or damage to all, more damage, more defense, and equivalent evasion. This does trade away some more vampirism, but I think we take this one. And let's see how we deal with this loop. I can Oblivion Tiles that I'm not interested in fighting. So I might consider doing that. Which tile is really difficult? Dude, I don't know at the moment which is too hard. We have one of these little uh, blood clots, whatever they were called, to fight. I think we can leave everything for now. Let's see if how our HP handles this. So we have a weak field which we can't place anymore because we've placed tiles on every part of the loop. Need a ring. And what we want, more metals. So again, we don't want to equip things unless it's a significant improvement to us. Another downside actually gets the damage to all, which as I said, I've been undervaluing a little bit. It's quite useful for these big battles. But if you hit a chest and it's a mimic, it will open it. If you don't hit the chest, then... It could stay closed even if it is a mimic, so you can deal with one enemy at a time. Again, quite nice balancing from the devs, I guess. That there is potentially a downside. Uh, more defense, equal vampirism. We lose evasion for attack speed. I think we will trade on that. And less damage, I'm going to hold on to it. This was quite a difficult battle with two flesh combs. They're now hitting for 128. Again, insane amount of damage from just base level mobs. Uh, I should probably just let these drop off the screen for now. I am a bit concerned slightly that our HP is just going down. So, 
let's just see which we think is going to be the most difficult task coming from here. This might get another flesh golem, but if I remove this, this becomes a hungry grove. So, I said, I don't think we want to do that. There can't be another goblin on there, because I think he's hit the cap of enemies that can be on that tile. I just don't want it to drop off the screen at the moment. I think I'm just going to place these for the HP game, even though it's fairly small compared to what we've got. And I won't let cards drop off. We've got another goblin camp. In fact, that might be what I just oblivion straight away. Get rid of it. Not interested. And let's carry on. Oh, you also have this level 11 armor. More HP, Vampirism, where we don't have it before. Damage to all up, and magic damage. I think we trade this. We tend to take damage a lot, so we do need more sustain. Uh, another rock to place here. We can't place it, most of these things now in the loop. We can play the vampire mansions, I guess. But the difficulty feels good enough for us right now. So yeah, they're pretty difficult to tell this. The ghouls are now hitting for 49 each, and there's four of them. And the vampire. It got vampirism. The difficulty really does ramp up in this game. Uh, to a satisfying level, that is place one more mountain boy and we finally finished this half of the screen's mountain. I would place the village if I could but I can't. I suppose the other option was to oblivion a tile on the road just to be able to play this village or any future villages. Not interested in that ring. Shield 5% more damage, attack speed way higher. What's my attack speed at the moment? Plus 28, so this will take it to 56. I think I take it. Uh, Vampirism Evasion, we lose counter, which I think is fine. We're also losing a lot of the attack speed, but we just gained some. But I think I'm happy with this. And also, another one of the blood enemies. That was a mimic, unfortunately. It would have been nice just to be a, a simple chest so that we could just heal off it. But you can't ever get everything you want in life. Just gonna place this down here at the moment. So yeah, blood clots, a lot of HP. Uh, it has other effects. It would be nice to see what these additional effects were, like liquid has a soul undead. We might find that out more as we progress through the acts and more abilities come on. Maybe there's certain synergies for liquid enemies versus others. Maybe damage types affect liquid more. It might even be what magic damage is meant to do. So we're about to start dropping things off our screen. We have another blood grove. I'm just going to quickly pause this actually. Is there a benefit to placing the blood grove? Yes, we can place it here. More mountains down. That's probably the best place for it. Another mountain. Make a blooming meadow. Let's just start placing these over here actually. And we're good to go. So this is a great run for resources, probably better than our last one, mainly because we've got an ability that lets us go over the cap. And we're making the most of it at the moment. I think again it's our testament to how we've improved through this game so far. That we're looping at the moment, not really powering up either, we're just letting stuff fall out of our hand or out for equipment from the materials, and we're not struggling too much. Basically always hovering around this 80% to 70% HP mark. Coming through probably the more difficult part of our loop now. If I got an Oblivion, I might Oblivion the tile to put a village down. Just to make sure that we survive. We are coming through some villages just now, so we'll get a big chunk of HP back. Uh, got another goblin camp then, but it's fine. We probably won't loop again after this. We're about to hit the cap on metal, which is what we were looking for. 
So there's not much of a reason to carry on going. I'm not sure if it ever stops, if there's a certain loop which can't go beyond. As I said, this is probably something we'd have to do later on in the game when we're very overpowered for Act 1. Right now, I think the next loop could be fatal for us. Just starting to like, trickle down to like 70% now. Yeah, we've hit the cap of metal now. There's no real reason for us to stay out here. I don't think this is enough metal actually for us to build both the crypt and the supply depot. Uh, so it is kind of a decision. I think I'd like to unlock the supply depot first, just because, as I said, the synergy is affecting it. It would be nice maybe for like gameplay wise, just for more variety for an additional character. But I think in terms of gameplay, it makes more sense to, uh, what was the word I was looking for? I think it makes more sense gameplay wise for us to pick the supply depot. I think that's a better power spike for us. Unless the necromancer is broken, I've never seen him. Let's place the meadow down here. Another day passes. Looks fine so far. Again, I'm pretty happy for Cast to drop off the screen. I'm kind of trying to open this up, although there's not really a huge benefit to opening this up now that I think about it. We're full of metal anyway. Orb of Expansion? Okay. I'm not sure where we should pick this up from. Interesting. Blooming Meadow. Maybe I'll go back and try and look at what Orb of Expansion came from. Maybe I hit a damage mark or something that gives it. Or maybe it's for completing a certain number of quests. Uh, nope, not interested in that shield. We are now at like half HP, we're about to use a potion, so... I think this is the, the right time to run on this loop. I'm, we'll make the camp now. But multiple days are now passing between each loop, so we're getting so many monsters spawning in each tail. I guess this is why the road lantern can be helpful. It might let you loop even longer. So, probably a future consideration, putting Road Lantern back into the deck to loop as long as possible. But we're going to hit the cap for most resources here. Surprised we haven't picked up as many s stones. Uh, let's place this rock. We should still place this meadow, actually. We're not quite full on rations yet. Place the meadow down. Gave us another uh, ration. And yeah. I mean, not much to complain about at the moment. We're definitely making through the loop. We have an oblivion as well if we really need to oblivion. We did use a potion, but. Comfortable is definitely the word for it. Last tile. Hopefully we'll get a few more cards dropping off the screen to get Book of Memories. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. So a day has just passed. I'm going to place down the rock tiles, the mountain tile. Might as well open that. But I think we did get some stone. Maybe it was just off the mountain tile actually. It did give us two more tiles so I'm going to place the rock and the mountain down because it gives us resources. I don't think I can place any other ones. The vampire mansions don't give you a resource. Uh, what could I do? Oh, I could oblivion a wheat field. Okay, the wheat field didn't give anything either. Alright, I'm just going to retreat. Another great haul of resources for us there. And back to the camp. Let's see what we can build. Yep, we can get our supply depot. We have 25 stable metals. So I think we picked that up. Unfortunately, we're one stable metal short of being able to get the crypt as well. But let's place our supply depot 
by the smithy. Good news! We've come up with a list of some things we need. I won't say they're all absolutely necessary, but they would make our lives a bit better. We can't keep eating from the ground, while the food is also the ground. And then we go to sleep on the same, you know, ground. I'm exaggerating, of course. Just want to get the idea. Sorry, just want you to get the idea. If you stumble upon a good piece of furniture, or an instrument, or anything else of use, remember the place and the, take the wagon there, and we'll see that your findings go to the right person. Okay, now we've got a supply and craft tab. Not entirely sure what I'm looking at here. So the assortment, sort of items in this category. So there's furniture, tools, food, and jewelry. It looks like currently we have nothing. And there's no more tabs below it, but maybe stuff can unlock because we do have a scroll bar here. It would be odd to add without it. So craft, create an item type. So I guess this is tools and ration, so we can change our resources into something. I might do it off the food rather than the metal now and just see what we get. So we've got a smoked ham. Heals 5 HP at the start of each day. Okay. So do I put this into food now? I see that's how it works. So you can right click to remove it from a slot. Could this only go in here? I think it could. Yeah, all the other ones blanked out. Okay, so again, this is another means of getting little uh, like trickle down effects. Let me just look on the build menu again. We've now got a warehouse which needs these orbs of expansion, a physical manifestation of the expanding space in the form of a little sphere. I'm not sure what we're getting this off at the moment. There's also the Intel Center, which we've seen can unlock additional cards. Hmm. So it could be something worth going towards as well. So this unlocks the Encyclopedia, which sounds useful, and unlocks Desert and Sand Dune cards. And we can add gold cards to our deck. So we don't have any gold cards, I think, at the moment. So I'm not too fussed to get into this. I think we want to try and go for the crypt. We can also build a mud hut. So you can give residents furniture or food to store. I'm not sure what the benefit of that is, again. So I think I'm going to hold off. But still quite a lot of the smelter, so... I think, again, we're going to have to do... Oh, we also got a warehouse now. So we can add more camp item limit. I guess the camp item limit is this supply menu. So it'll give us more slots. But it's interesting though. We're coming quite high up the building menu as well for now, but it costs a lot to unlock these things. And currently we've not had a big increase. We have now got a ruins card though. So let's just quickly look at what the ruins card is. So it gives a random basic resource shard upon visit. Interesting. And spawns a scorch worm every two days. So I think we're gonna put this in our deck regardless just to see how it works out. But now at the, the limit of our cards. I think we still want to keep the cemetery. I think I'm happy with all of these tiles. Maybe weak fields isn't that useful. Five times HP HP healing to adjacent villages. And the village heals 15 plus five times. Hmm. I mean, we were okay on HP, so maybe we do take the wheat field out. It fills up a lot of our map as well. And we put the ruins in. And this is every two days again. So we could double it with chrono crystals. But I don't know what the benefit is yet until we check. So I think we'll definitely run it before we use the chrono crystals. Sorry if it feels like we're undervaluing this card. Maybe it's like the best card in the game. Same with Swamp. But it just doesn't feel like either of our characters at the moment gain a huge benefit of having Chrono Crystals. Uh, on the next episode, maybe we'll try and do an Act 2 run again as the Warrior instead and see how far we can get into it. I don't feel like we've made a huge progression towards like leveling up, but I think for a variety, let's see how far we can get on this character. It's the one we're more familiar with. We don't need too much metal either to unlock the Decromancer. 
And we can train then to start beating chapter one bosses or act one bosses with the necromancer. Uh, so I think that's going to do it for this episode. Again, thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe if you want to. And I'm going to see you next time. Goodbye.